Hey, yo, look, if you go to prison, you might be at one that has weights that you can use, or you might be at one that doesn't. But one thing about being in prison, you're gonna wanna get as fit as you can, as fast as you can. I mean, you might be all right if you're on some cupcake ass minimum yard, but if you're on a medium or a max, you're gonna work out, you're gonna get that handle. And it has nothing to do with looks or what's socially acceptable or anybody's feelings. It's a matter of survival. Because walking around a prison yard out of shape puts a target on your back. Hey, what is up, y'all? I'm coming at you from a hotel. We are in the classy-ass La Quinta right now. We had an ice storm here in the state of Oregon, and it not only knocked out my internet, it knocked out my power. Now, they got my power restored, but my internet is still down, and I do everything that I do on the internet, whether it be recovery coaching or content. I basically live online. So I packed up the wife and the dog, and we're having ourselves a little vacation. Look, before we get started here tonight, I need y'all to understand that I am not being hateful, I am not being judgmental, I am not trying to cast no type of shade on nobody. I am somebody who has struggled with my weight through major periods of my life too. But when you go to prison, there's certain things that you need to do to survive. There's certain standards that you have to maintain. And if you go in there fat, bro, you're gonna have to get that fixed. You're gonna have to take care of that. There are only a few types of people that can actually slide with being morbidly overweight in prison and we're gonna get into that whole thing here in a minute. But before we get started, I need to say one thing, y'all. Some of y'all are sleeping on your boy, man. If you haven't subscribed yet, quit being a little bitch. Handle that, you know you want to. And y'all know that I'm in a hotel. I got people on that side of me. I got people on this side of me. Y'all know that I can't do my normal intro and yell, or can I? Let's go! So hey look you guys, I don't know if you've noticed a certain theme about pretty much all of my content, but it's pretty much that prison sucks and you don't want to go there. It's a bottom of the barrel form of morality, it's a bottom of the barrel form of survival, it's not living, it's not thriving, it's not getting ahead in life in any way, shape, or form, it's just getting through. And if you can survive without getting too much trauma, then you might be able to get out and do something better with your life. And that would be my hope for anyone and everyone who's ever been locked up, as long as they're not a chosen. Then I think we should make them serve their entire sentence on general population, and then we should give them the wood chipper. What we're going to talk about today, though, is if you go into prison overweight, you are already starting out at a huge disadvantage, because first off, they are not going to give you enough food in that chow hall, on that chow line, for you to maintain what you're normally used to. Like, it is not going to fulfill you. You are not going to be full. You are going to be in starvation mode a lot of the time. It's not going to be a good deal for you. You are going to suffer. It's going to be miserable unless you got a lot of money on your books for canteen. Now, just as a general rule, you're going to see people come in and they're morbidly obese and they're going to lose some weight, man. It might be 40 pounds. It might be 80 pounds. It just depends, bro. Even without working out, they're just giving you enough calories every single day for you to survive. They're not giving you enough to thrive or to be able to maintain any type of gains or anything like that. If you want to put on some muscle or you want to keep your fat, that's going to be on you to be able to provide the money and the food to get that. Now, like I said, where you go to prison, it may have weights or it may not. It really just depends because a lot of prisons are phasing out the weights because a lot of the inmates that are dumb as hell and they don't know what they're doing, they go in there and they end up using weights as weapons and that gets taken away from the rest of us. That's why convicts will stab you for that, bro. Like most of the weights are known as a no fight zone. You do not bring your drama up in there, little ass bitch. Take that somewhere else. Take that out to the yard. Take that down to the showers, take that to anywhere else besides the weight pile. The only cardinal rule that you can break that's worse than fighting in the chow hall because you're going to fuck up everybody else's meal is no fighting on the weight pile. Now, even if they don't have weights there, they're still probably going to have a dip bar and a pull-up bar. It doesn't matter what they have, bro. You're going to use it. You're going to figure it the f*** out. Like if you got to do push-ups with your celly sitting on your back, if you have to do squats with your celly sitting on your shoulders with his raw ass pipe just all up against your neck while you sweat and grunt it out, you're going to do what you got to do. A lot of places, if you have the room, man, you're going to be doing burpees. All these gangs that you're going to see out there, they doing burpees. Burpees are the business, dog. Burpees were developed for the military and then the prison gangs got a hold of them and that's going to be your standard issue, bro. That's going to be your ration. That's going to be 
be a big part of your life while you were in prison if you're going to be anything, man. If you want the best chance of survival, you better get real comfortable doing some burpees, dog. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that they going to kill you for being fat. What I'm saying is ain't nobody going to respect you on that yard if you morbidly obese, homie. It's just the way that it is, and respect is of the utmost importance in there. That's what's going to get people to leave you alone. That's what's going to keep you out of drama. If you don't got no respect, you're going to have a much harder life on the inside. And there's only two types of fat inmates that get respect in there. One is the dude who has stuff coming in, bro. He got that hustle. Maybe he's got a girl who comes in to see him at visiting with something tucked up into her cooch, and she puts it in a little bag, and he be eating them and them and swallowing all that stuff, and then he shits it out, or he pukes it out, and he be selling drugs on that yard. That's one way that a big old motherfucker can get some respect on that yard. The other way is if they just a stabbing ass dude, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know a few gang members that are fat as hell, bro, but they done stuck people, bro, and they stay sticking people. If there's work to do, bro, they down to put that in. And they not just gonna get you the ones, bro, because here's the thing about being fat, bro. You are gonna gas out in a fight, bro. A lot of people think that fights last a lot longer than they really do. These are people who have never been in a real fight in their life. They think that a fight is gonna last five, six, ten minutes. You're high as hell, bro. You need to put that pipe down, dog. A fight really lasts like one, two minutes. Yo, you gassed out. One of the other is gassed out. If the other person gasses out before you gas out, that means you get to beat the hell out of them while they just... <laughs> but if you gas out before them, guess what that means for you? It means you screwed, bro. So no fat dude is going to come giving you some fair ones, bro. They're going to stick you, dog. They're going to run something deep up inside you. And I don't mean the wiener penis, bro. Get your mind out of the gut. What the hell is wrong with y'all? Now, if you out there on that prison yard and you ain't got no respect and people don't see you as a threat, you already going to have a target on your back. If you got anything, people are going to think they can take it from you. If there's a dude in there who's a chubby chaser and he's got a little bit of gay in him, man, he might just think that titty fucking you sounds like lunch, bro. And that's probably something you ain't trying to have happen to you against your will while you in prison. And you also might end up getting stereotyped, bro. Like a lot of the chomos that are in there, they spent their entire life living in their mom's basement, like finding kids to meet up with on their keyboard. Yo, maybe every once in a while going out there and luring them off the schoolyard at the middle school by their mom's house. You know what I'm saying? But as they go on in prison for years and years and years, not being able to go out and hit that yard, not being able to work out because we don't let them, they get grosser and grosser and grosser. So if somebody mistakes you for one of them, that's like a worst case scenario, bro. Then you have to fight to be able to prove that you ain't about a punk, bro. And if you can't fight it's gonna end bad dog like if you can't handle it if you can't hang if you get gassed out bro there's just so many ways that that could turn bad for you and look the bottom line is that when you're in prison you got nothing left but time so you may as well use it doing something positive that can better yourself that can better your health that can put you in a better position when you hit that gate and get back out into the real world man now is your time to develop yourself develop your character read books work out do all the things that you could do to become your best Best self so that when you get back out, you've got routine, you've got structure, you've got discipline. It'll give you a better chance at not going back to prison. And having been to prison and completely lost my freedom and had to live in such a guttural, bottom of the barrel, survival based place, like I know now, I completely understand that there is nothing that is worth losing my freedom unless it's protecting myself or my family or someone who's innocent who needs help like other than that i will never be reckless or toss my freedom away ever again out here on the streets we're all free to be loving and accepting and kind if we choose to do so which is what i choose to do i choose to love everybody i choose to accept everybody i don't judge other people unless they're just absolutely insipid wretched people who go out of their way to hurt other people like wherever you are at in life i can promise you this i love you it's easy to love man if people can hate people for no reason i can love people for absolutely no reason so we can have that out here but when you're in there you don't really have that option, man. It's a different universe, and it's a place you don't want to go. All right, y'all, that's a wrap for this one, man. I really appreciate you guys riding out with me. Yo, I love each and every one of you, and I appreciate the time that you spend just listening to me talk, man. I appreciate this community. Yo, if you liked this video, YouTube gave us a whole ass button for that. Did you know that? If you've got any questions or comments, they made a space for that, too. And if you haven't subscribed to me yet, homie, you really doing me dirty. I just want you to know, like, you hurt my one feeling. I only had one, and you found it. So until next time, y'all, one love. Be good or be good at it, baby.